This is SWTN. Like most of us in society, I have seen the aura or halo presented in many paintings and statues from around the world. It appeared more often in certain periods rather than in other ones. In earlier years, I would gain a look at the aura, but it was not until I turned vegetarian and raised my own personal physical vibration that I was able to see the brighter colors and other levels. It was difficult for me at that time to understand why others could not see the colors and all that beauty. Further, when looking at people and seeing their aura, they would question why I was looking at them in that way, in such a strange manner. I was later to learn that it is theorized that those who see auras with their physical eyes can focus their eyes in the opposite direction. The phrase, the waters of life mentioned in the Bible and in many other pieces of literature during William Shakespeare period was interpreted by an old book from the church's archives as meaning the electrical energy field that flows around the body like water. It appears to be what we would call today the halo or aura. It is not any different than any other word or set of words that has lost its true meaning through time. For example, weeds, meaning your basic needs, such as clothing, an old English definition, plants, for example, basic healing plants or herbs. Plants that are thought of as weeds are also used as herbs. For example, chicory would be one, and have healing properties as do dandelions. Referring into the Bible, we will see plants that will be plentiful and available for healing. Loss of the true meaning of a word can cause us to lose our health and more. It can be dangerous to us and we can lose too much without proper interpretation. Before we continue any farther, I want you to remember the phrase, above all else, know thyself and to thine own self be true. Many instruments are now available to people who do not have the gift of sight to see the aura. One of these is goggles, among other devices, which have varying degrees of success. The Aura Camera is another one, and many of them don't work, I understand, but there are some that do. This particular system that I use is an Aura Camera and a computer which uses a hand plate. I've been able to find that it actually reflects what I've seen with my physical eye, so I trust it in that respect, plus many people that I've spoken to years prior to doing the Aura Imaging, it reflects exactly what they had told me. Now many people can learn to see their own aura, but that will be something that we'll go over in future. When a planet is retrograde, it appears from our position on the Earth as if the planet is moving backwards. This is Planets never move backwards, it just seems to us that the planet is moving backwards. Mercury is the messenger to the gods, called in many cultures by many different names, Hermes. He's the one who takes our messages to the gods, but he's also a trickster. And when Mercury is in retrograde, the trickster side comes up. Mercury retrograde happens approximately three times a year, usually for 20 to 23 days at a time. And it's one of those times when it can feel as if everything is going wrong. There can be more phone tag going on, more miscommunication. People have a tendency to get lost a little bit more than normal. They can write down the wrong appointment times, the wrong directions. Letters can get sent to the wrong place or not get sent at all. Mercury retrograde is a time period where we have to stay on communication 
a bit more than we normally do. We have to be a little bit more aware of where we've placed important objects such as our keys. We get a lot of lost keys and a lot of lost wallets during a Mercury retrograde. And it's not a good time period for starting anything new. New things that people try to start during a retrograde most often don't go as well as they should or they can mess up just completely. Sometimes if the project does go ahead, in retrospect the person will go, what was I thinking when I did that? Uh, my experience with the Mercury Retrograde is that it's not a good time period for signing a contract, uh, making a large purchase such as a house, a car, computer. Not good for making commitments of any kind. Um, I've seen people move during the Mercury Retrograde and then end up having to move again within a six month time period. Very often if a person starts a new job during a retrograde time, no matter how good the job looks, something will change in it so that how it was originally presented is not how the job turns out. Mercury retrograde is a time period that can be used for some good things though and what we need to be aware of when we look at the Mercury retrograde time period is the word retrograde which starts with RE. A retrograde can be very good for anything that starts with RE, such as remodeling, researching, reconnecting, refiling, remembering. In fact, it's not unusual for people from the past to get back in touch with us during a retrograde time period just because they are going over old territory. If we keep these cautions in mind for when the Mercury retrograde time period occurs, it can help things go a little bit more smoothly. Now, you may ask yourself, how do I find out when Mercury is in retrograde? Sometimes I will get phone calls from people and they'll go, is Mercury retrograde right now? Everything's just not going right. Well, your best thing to do is to go and buy yourself an astrological calendar, whether it's a pocket calendar or a Llewellyn's Wall calendar. An astrological calendar is going to have those retrograde time periods marked in it. And you can mark them on your own calendar and be a little bit more aware during those time periods. A lot of times, too, during a retrograde, I, you see things break down more. You can see more communication breakdowns, mechanical breakdowns, computer breakdowns. Uh, I always give the retrograde time period, I give it a bump of about a week to 10 days before the retrograde actually starts because that's when I usually notice the Mercury retrograde energy starting to kick in. Again, if you pay attention to the Mercury retrograde time and the Mercury retrograde energy, you can save yourself from making some false starts and you can save yourself from some frustrations. There are two colors that are generally used for the root chakra, red and black. But I like using black the best as I like the dense vibration and the grounding qualities that it brings to a session. The root chakra is located at the base of the pelvis and goes in a conical shape down into the ground. The root chakra is connected with issues of our beginnings, beliefs, and security and balance. When one or more of these change, we may feel ungrounded or in a state of flux. The stones I'm going to talk about assist with these issues. Black tourmaline is a striated stone, which is very hard, making the energy very fast and penetrating. I call this stone the rotorooter of the mineral kingdom, as even though it's black, the speed by which it works radiates white light up and through the chakra system, thereby clearing the chakras. Since it is very hard, it penetrates through the system to unlock blocks and clogs, as it were. It's also very grounding. Smoky quartz has the color of brown or brownish gray and gets its natural radiation in the ground. The stone is quite calming and centering so that if someone is anxious or depressed, it can help to relax and pacify. I've also found smoky quartz to be good for balancing the mind and when the mind is peaceful, grounding and centering are easily obtained. Smoky quartz is also useful in dissolving anger and resentment which come from releasing old beliefs and conditionings. Black obsidian has been called the mirror stone by Native Americans because of its ability to help you see your shadow side. The shadow side is where we hold the more negative qualities of our personalities. In order to be balanced, we must be willing to look at this side of ourselves and to come to peace with it. Obsidian assists us in seeing them, understanding them, and having compassion with ourselves and others because of these traits. It is quite a forceful stone. So, to begin with, I would advise using them in small doses. We don't need to knock our socks off the first time we use it. But please understand 
that by coming into balance with our differences, we can become more whole, which Obsidian is designed to do. Hematite is a heavy metallic gray stone that is iron based. I use this at the feet to help people ground and stay focused. If you're feeling spacey and need to concentrate, carrying hematite will keep you centered. It helps in balancing the body, mind, and spirit, as well as transforming negativity in your auric field. Hematite is also useful for purifying the circulatory system and keeping the spine in alignment. Healing issues of the root chakra is vitally important if we wish to move forward with our goals, dreams, and purpose in life. And these four stones can be invaluable assets in that pursuit. Feel free to experiment with them, meditate with them, and sense the experience. Transformation is waiting. The time of the winter solstice is when the earth is at its most northern tilt away from the sun causing the shortest day and the longest night of the year. Solstice comes from the Latin word sol, which means sun, and sistit, which means standing. This is the time of year when the sun appears to stand still for three days and was a time of great uncertainty for ancient peoples. They tried their sympathetic magic to bring power back to the sun, to set it on its course again by lighting blazing bonfires, burning yule logs, and putting candles on evergreen trees. The Nordic people called this festival Yule, meaning wheel, as it was the turning point in the wheel of the year as one cycle is completed and another begins. Yule symbolized the return of the sun god, or Balder, who was slain at the summer solstice and is reborn at the winter solstice. These cultures also provided us with the tradition of the Christmas tree, since the evergreen did not decay and kept its life force, even in the dark of winter. The Romans called this holiday Saturnalia, in honor of the god of seed time and harvest of hourglass and sickle. It marked the end of the fall harvesting and the beginning of winter sowing, and was celebrated starting on December 17th and ran as long as seven days or more. At Saturnalia, the world was turned upside down and all social distinctions were discarded and reversed. Slaves were waited on by their masters and could insult them without fear of reprisal. In medieval times, priests dressed up as women and laity as priests. It was a time to forget past disputes and begin with a new slate. It was forbidden to declare war, much like ceasefires during Christmas time. Criminals were not executed and the schools were closed. The whole world stopped in accordance with the still stand of the sun. Compare this to the annoying corporate shopping holiday that Christmas has become, with lots of grumpy people running around in malls when they should be going with the flow of nature and doing absolutely nothing. During the month before the Saturnalia festival, a mock king was chosen who enjoyed all the luxuries of a real king and the allowance to do anything immoral that he wanted. On Saturn's day, however, he was forced to take his own life on the altar of the god he had played. This ritual killing of the aging king was practiced in many cultures. The king represented the vitality of the country and as he aged, he had to be slain so that a new younger king could revivify the dying nation. The Iroquois strangled two white dogs as a sacrifice at their winter solstice, and the Incas sacrificed a black llama. A remnant of the old king that rules this time of year is the familiar Santa Claus figure. He's the old man with the white beard, the year grown old, the blanket of snow, the father of time. He lives in the cold northern regions and is the lord of the dead and the god of the old dying year. But he is also the lord of rebirth as he descends through the chimney, making his shamanic transformation. Santa's sleigh is a solar boat or chariot that is pulled through the skies by eight reindeer. These reindeer represent the eight major Sabbaths or holy days. The reindeer are a remnant of the horned one. They are creatures of the north and shed their antlers, thus again symbolizing the cosmic dance of death and rebirth. 
In Persia, the birth of the sun god Mithras was celebrated on December 25th. In Greenland, after going 40 days without seeing the sun, the men would climb the mountaintops to await its return. Druid bonfires blazed across the midwinter skies of Britain and Gaul. The Pueblo Indians held an all-night ceremony, making offerings to the dead and to sun images. In Scandinavia, a Viking ship is sent blazing onto the waters amidst fireworks and celebration. Many people today don't know that the idea of celebrating Christ's birthday did not begin until the 4th century. The earliest celebrations were held on January 6th when the Magi presented their gifts, known today as Three Kings or Epiphany. Religious scholars decided that Christ was conceived on March 25th, so his birthday would have to be December 25th. This has the advantage of being near the winter solstice, which was already being celebrated as the birthday of the unconquered sun. So Jesus was not originally the reason for the season. So however you choose to toast the special turning point in the year, we can all share in the hope of this holiday season that from now on, the days will be getting longer. This spring, it actually formed like an altar, see it? And look at how big these and old these trees are. By rights, it should have never formed on its own like that, but it actually did. And so it's almost like an archway. And when we put my people in here many times, they just disappear or they blur. The ancient ones with their priestesses would transfer, instead of dying and crossing over, they would transfer their, their life force into a certain tree. This is kind of like a druid practice too. And they would actually transfer their energies into a tree. And then, then they'd be able to watch over the forest, and they'd be called guardians of the tree, or guardian of the forest. Then when that tree died, that tree would bear seed, you know, for other trees, and thus keep the... Close your eyes, run your hands down through. What you're going to do is, behind your eyelids, you're going to start developing some sort of a picture. And this is how the tree will communicate with you. Or you will feel emotion, you might feel some sort of heat, you might feel some sort of cold. But but when you start touching, this tree is going to start reacting to you. Burlington is, uh, uh, has uh, what they call uh, a rainbow vortex. And uh, uh, it's quite large uh, and still growing. It uh, grows stronger all the time. And it keeps expanding out. And uh, because of it, we have a, a lot of paranormal experiences, phenomena in this area. If you have paranormal activities going on within a hundred mile radius of Burlington actually. The Haunted Woods Tour is a tour designed around multi-dimensions and portals. Every one, on every one of the tops of these rock miles they're all charcoal. Like there's some sort of pure, uh, 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 ceremony of purification of fire of some sort. It's just too early to understand this. We just, this is something just recently discovered and uh, all scientists, uh, various researchers around the world are trying to figure out what these portals are and, uh, and, uh, and how they apply to, uh, to the world we live in today. It's yet to be found out. No one really knows what's going on yet. So what we do, knowing this, we take you over here and then also, you see how you got the crystal going through it? See this one here? All these. And like this one here, see the crystal in it? So when I put people on here, okay? When I put people on here, I take their energy, and have you guys sit here, okay, in a group, and then Brad and I sit here, and we just start taking pictures of you guys. And then you guys start shifting into all these other parallel universes. Uh -huh. You just sit there, and I'm going to take pictures of you guys. When people have claimed to see ghosts and many other reported anomalous cold spots and scribes chills on their skin, modern ghost hunters have shown that unusual magnetic fields and strong voltages also occur in these same haunted locations that we take you to. Unusual orbs have been photographed 
at the same time that the magnetic and electrical disturbances are measured. None of these can be explained by conventional science. One of the more prominent constellations in the southern December sky at 9 p.m. is Cetus the Whale. While the geometric pattern does resemble that of a whale, it is actually the reverse of what you might think, for Menkar means nostril, being at the head of the whale, and Deneb Kaitos means tail of Cetus, being at the back end. But these two are not the most noteworthy stars in this patch of night sky. Rather, that honor is reserved for Mira, meaning wonderful which was the first variable star to be recognized as such. Mira comes and goes, appearing and disappearing with clockwork regularity. Leuton 726-8 is the sixth closest star to Earth and is a red dwarf binary. While still visible to the naked eye, barely, it is hardly much bigger than the planet Jupiter. It burns slowly and coolly and is only visible to us because of its nearness. Tau Ceti, smack in the middle of the constellation, is even more interesting in that it so closely matches our own sun that it is one of the most likely places to look for extraterrestrial life. Being close, only 12 light years away, makes it all that more enticing. From the close to the very far away, Galaxy M77 was one of the earliest galaxies for which the redshift Doppler effect was discovered. And two quasars on the same map shine their light from 10 to 15 billion years ago as among the most distant things known. Two is quiet vibration. Two brings with it cooperation or the need for it. This number needs the working of people or elements together to make them happen. This is good for friendship and associations. It deals with feminine energy and can be very sensitive. Two is not a vibration of work, but may help associations that nurture work. Its negative aspects are oversensitivity, lack of confidence, and relationship problems of all different sorts. It is not a material vibration. It is a social one. Physical health may be weakened. Two is not a good number for money. The high priestess in letter and number is the antithesis to the magician. She is the beginning and end of the journey, but not the journey itself. Rather, she is the two parties concerned in any deal. She is the subconscious or subjective mind. She is passive, receptive, virginal. She is concerned with memory and the records of the past. She is the divine feminine, goddess energy, untouched by material needs.